speaker today who is joining this um, webinar. Uh, he's from Bangladesh, which is also my country. Mr. Shofik Arbuya, who is a communication, sustainability, and corporate social responsibility enthusiast. Current 15 years of experience in the corporate and development sectors, and he's led transformative efforts in CSR, sustainability, internal communications, culture, and employee engagement. Not to forget, he is also led uh, and spearhead the launch of the country's first largest online school, 10 Minute School. He has completed both basic and advanced training courses of A8000 offered by Social Accountability International and have collaborated with various garment manufacturers to enhance their compliance standards. Not to also forget, which the part about Shafiq Arbuya I really love is he is a personal enthusiast and also a journalist. He often I see him writing on the net and online media about sustainability, CSR, and all the other environmental aspects. Let's welcome Mr. Shofik Arbuya. Shofik, bhai, how Thank are you? Thank you so doing? much. I'm great. I'm just great. <laughs> so today, like always, uh, every mm -hmm. year is a very important day, especially people like you who are into. CSR because today you have a busy day and I hope that you are positive and uh... I think the government should you know we have seen enough uh, impact of climate change so and there are funds there are global movement there are global support as well there are global best practices that we can adopt so I think the government must come forward take things seriously uh Maybe they can come up with a ministry of sustainability, uh, where this this ministry will you know look after the sustainable aspects of how we can tackle the climate change issues, how we can you know improve people's livelihood, how we can improve people's health. This sustainability department or ministry will look after all these things, and there should be certain policies. Uh, there are policies right now for different sectors. There are policies from banking industry. There are policies for the RMG industry, for the leather leather industry. But there are a lot of you know organizations in the informal sector and this informal sector is quite large there are not much uh, nothing much you know not much guideline for the small growers for the small business people who are actually you know they are we say that they are the main driving force of our economy the small and medium enterprises there are not not much there are there is nothing much for them uh, in terms of policy and guidelines so I think the government should first, uh, you know, come up with uh, a particular organization that will look after the sustainability issues. It can be a Ministry of Sustainability and then invite corporates and NGOs to work together in partnership with the government to address issues, make plans, long term plans and execute them together and engage the youth because we have 70 percent of our population are, you know, they fall between the age of 15 to 65. So they must utilize this population, not just to work, not just to do corporate works, works or NGO works or researches. They must come voluntarily to support these initiatives, to support the government, to support the Ministry of Sustainability in, in attaining certain things, to create social awareness, to you know do movement in, the, in their community. So when you tell your people that in your community that do not do these things, do these things, these are good for environment, these are bad for environment, people will change. There was an incident, uh, I think four to five years back when uh, two school students were killed by a bus in Bangladesh. And all the school students, they came on the street uh, to fix the traffic, to fix the, the unexpected behavior of the bus drivers, of the auto rickshaw drivers. And people were, you know, these are small kids. They are not even grown up. Schools, uh, kids of maybe they're studying in class four to five. They are standing by the street. They are controlling the traffic. And everybody was bound to behave. If you don't have driving license, you're not going on the street because the school's children, they will feel you ashamed. And media is following everywhere. So you will be on the camera for and I mean, doing stupid things and or maybe holding your ears because you don't have a driving license. And these kids will make you do that. So we have seen the power of youth and we can utilize that, that power to ensure that we do things right. It's, it's better late than never. 
it's it's you know it's we still have time to start certain things where we can address these issues and we can come up with a solution so, so, so the government must take lead in that and it it must have certain framework invite private sector organizations and engage youth to you know achieve the sustainability goals agree i think the csr public and private both sectors holds the responsibility sustainability in 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 from bangladesh perspective i don't see much i don't see much you know effort uh, uh, from from the government either from the government or from organizations or maybe individuals or there are some volunteer organizations so you know occasionally they they go into a pond they clean a lake uh, in a park area they engage some youth that's it once in a year there is no, I mean, that zero plastic movement that you have mentioned, we have, you have reached 22 universities or 20 universities or so, and you have more than, more than 10,000 volunteers. We haven't seen any such initiative in Bangladesh. Uh, we occasionally engage the youth, take them to the posh areas to clean up some lakes and, and, and show it to the media. That's it. Uh, planting trees, uh, for the sake of planting trees, we are planting trees on the environment days. But that is not enough. There is no... There is no, you know, there is not, there is no place where we can, you know, depend or rely on that. Okay, so every year we'll plant one lakh trees or one lakh saplings, so that it adds, you know, to the to the forest that we are losing right now. We don't have that land. We don't have people who are aware of uh, how to, you know, keep this tree secure or how to maintain their trees. Uh, we let our our animals eat the tree plant, uh, eat the small plants, and we don't, we actually don't bother. So the, there is a lack of initiative, lack of awareness, lack of uh, policy as well. The government agencies, they are cutting trees. They're not planting trees properly. So yeah, things are not very good. Things don't look very good, actually. Actually, I totally agree with you. All these factors, especially the forestation uh, data, we were actually discussing in a forum, even about Sri Lanka, even the government says that you know higher number of forestation is there but actually it's maybe 15 percent because when government comes with data they mm -hmm. also calculate the t estates also a part of forestation which is yes. not yes. because yes. It, it does not hold the habitation that a forest holds absolutely. absolutely i agree with you so the next question goes to you how do you define corporate social responsibility because you are into csr yes. right now yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I was very fortunate that I started when I started my career. I started with a, a center called CSR Center, and at that time, people didn't. I even I didn't know what CSR was until I joined that center. And people used to ask me, "What do you, what do you do?" And uh, and they they thought CSR means customer service representative. So they used to you know uh, misunderstand my my job. But luckily, uh, over that last you know 15, 16 years, uh, now many people know about CSR. But the, the problem is that they think CSR means you have to you know, give things back because you're earning uh, by your business. And that is how they define CSR, that you're earning money, so you have to give it to someone. That is actually not CSR. CSR is, is, is a very big concept. It's like if you want to live in a society, you have, you have to do certain, you have to you know, follow certain rules, you have to do certain things, and you have to... Uh, stop yourself from doing certain things so if i if i play louder music at night i may enjoy the music but it can be it can cause problem to my neighbors so my responsibility is to is to make sure that i am not creating problem for others that is also csr so as an organization my responsibility is that my business or my products or my services they don't cause problems to others so that is why we will ensure that our products are safe, our products are hygienic and healthy, and we we promise what we promise to our customers, we deliver that. Uh, we take care of our people, and it's not just about giving money. So corporate social responsibility is, is, is a big concept, like everything an organization, a corporation do, they have to do it in a responsible manner so that they, they bring positive changes and they don't they, they don't do harm to others. If they can ensure that, that is that is corporate social responsibility. That's that's as simple as that. But we often mix it up with charity, donation, giving money, posing for, for media, giving something to the poor and taking a photo and posing it, posting in the media that this is what we do. Uh, one of events, we we act one of events doesn't count under under CSR. You have to do it, you know, repetitively. 
so that it can and CSR ensures your sustainability. If you are a responsible organization, if you are a responsible person, you will go longer. People will support you. You can take care of yourself properly. You will have less, you know, uh, uh, what, what, how do I say, uh, less obstacles in your in your progress because you are compliant. So these are the things that we have to that that define CSR. Uh, you actually rightly said. Uh, I remember one of your journal reading uh, when I was reading. You have actually referred the similar subject on CSR, how everybody can do their part, and if it happens, it actually fall into pieces. So, so considering even for example now South Asia is uh, facing a huge flood, even in Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I go back to your journal, what you wrote, if you you said everybody do their part in CSR, sustainability can achieve its agenda. So do you think? For example, if the current context of flood in Bangladesh, how do you see that is happening? Is it happening at all? Yes. Does the health sector is going there and doing the health part? Telecom is going to do the telecom part. How everything is falling into pieces? How do you see it? Well, the telecoms are definitely that they are they are putting a lot of people. They are taking a lot of trouble to ensure that they keep networks live. In fact, there were certain people who were who were rescued from the flood situation because because of the mobile phone or something, and uh, and two people were rescued from India. Two Bangladeshis were rescued from India to a local you know radio community radio, uh, and they were lost during the flood or maybe during the cyclone, and they were found through the community uh, radio. So, but. Coming back to the flooding point, yes, uh, there are, recently we have seen a lot of floods, especially in the eastern region where we have borders with Assam, uh, Meghalaya in India. And it is mainly because uh, people are cutting uh, the hills. They are destroying the hills. They are building resorts. They are building homes. Uh, and there are a lot of, you know, uh, tobacco cultivation in the hilly areas because the farmers in the plain land, they have, you know, they have utilized their land. So the, the, the tobacco companies, they cannot grow tobacco in the plain lands anymore. So they're now moving to hill areas where they're cutting hills, they're, they're you know, removing, uh, abolishing the, the forest and they're planting tobacco uh, plants there. So the flood situation actually worsened because in India, there have been a lot of, you know, hill, they're cutting hills. So the water is sliding through the hill uh, and, and, and they're taking down the mud as well. So which creates a lot of pressure when the water forces uh, when the water comes down the hill and it, it comes through a lot, you know, much more, uh, you know, stronger than it used to come before. So that is why we're we are seeing more floods in the Silet region, in the in the eastern region of the country. Now, we could have taken advantage of that. I've uh, also written about it, but it's not published as yet. We can uh, actually take advantage of this flood water. We can, we can, make a storage or we can you know create a pipeline like the oil oil pipeline that we have in Azerbaijan, Russia and that region. And we can we can just take this flood water and put it somewhere uh, where it's needed, maybe for the industrial areas. Like we have a lot of garment area, garment factories here. They produce jeans and you know how much how much water it takes to wash or or dye a jeans pant. So they can utilize and instead of you know extracting the groundwater, they can utilize this flood water store it somewhere and then utilize it for washing so there are, with 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 problems there come solutions as well new perspectives as well but we're not ready for that uh it it, it will take time because creating this is this massive pipeline uh it must need uh, you know a lot of investment and it will need the public private partnership as well because the government alone cannot do it the private sector has to show interest that yes we can utilize this water so bringing this water from the bloody areas Will be beneficial for the society and for the company as well, and then they can they can move forward. So people are not doing their part when when they are cutting the hills, when they are making the resorts. As a customer, I am going to that resort. I am enjoying my holidays, but I am not I am not taking I am not thinking about how much it costs to build that resort. I mean the cost, not not the construction cost, the cost that the opportunity cost that we have lost through the resort. So if there was no resort in that hill area, the hill would have been, you know, safe. It would have been, it would have been quite, quite natural, and the natural calamities would not take place. So we're creating this resource for our entertainment, but by doing that, we're actually creating problem for others. The flood situation is, uh, you know, worsening day by day. So if we can take responsibility of what we are doing, how if we are creating problem for others or not, if we could simply think about that. 
that would have been solved, you know, a lot of problems in our society. Rightly said. I think CSR also involved a lot of innovation now in going forward if we want to sustain uh, through a CSR program. Uh, so now to the next question, as we mentioned in the beginning, today's uh, International Environment Day. So in your world, how do you see Environment Day is achieving its goal or is it becoming just another day out of all the international days? It's, it's to me, it's just another day. Uh... When, when 5th June comes closer, especially at the end of May, we uh, Google that what is the theme of this year's environmental day. And we, okay, so this is the theme. So what do we do? Uh, oh, sorry, we don't do anything in, in that line. So, okay, so let's create something. Okay, let's create something. Let's, let's post something that this is how we're taking care of the environment. And it's the same old story. It's the same old story for all, most of the corporations. We're doing this, we're doing that. And one of one all those all those one-off events, we're planting trees uh, somewhere where where no one will take care of the trees anymore. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this environment day is just a, just another day, uh, but it could have been different if if the government, you know, they came forward and they make a plan that this environment day will start this one this thing, and for the next one year until the next environment day, this is what every everyone will be doing. So if, if it's a plan, if it's about planting trees, they could have had a plan that okay, from starting from 5th June 2024 until 2025, 5th June, we will plant, you know, so say like 10 million trees. So then they can distribute the number to government organizations, private organizations, some volunteer organizations, NGOs can look after whether uh, things are going on the right track or not. In, in fact, the Minister of Environment can also, you know, keep track of things, how things are going. And say, for example, by January or February 2025, we reach this target of planting 10 million trees. Then we could have said that, yes, this environment day was impactful. And let's move forward and see what is the next environment day theme and we can plan something like that. So as of now, I think these environmental days, this world environment days, these are just a day. Uh, the other day, one of my a new joiner who was a, who was a graduate, uh, that person came to me and said that 5th June is the green day, so we want to send uh, this message to our customers. So I said, uh, what is what is green day? And the person says, uh, well, green day is green day. This is that that is when we uh, we don't pollute uh, the environment. I said, no, that's that's not the fact. So this this young mind, uh, the person actually doesn't know what in the environment day is. Maybe that person has seen companies posting, you know, beautiful visuals on social media, on LinkedIn, that this is how we're saving the planet. But those are actually one of things. It's just for the for the environment day. Uh, yeah, I actually enjoyed what you were uh, saying. And I actually recall when we used to be colleagues, right? So yes. I, I can recall all of this, you know, agenda and, you know, dates, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, okay, better not go there. So... As you rightly said, uh, which you just explained about uh, the corporates are coming up with, you know, sudden plans and, you know, 5th June. So it leads to a, a word that is circulating uh, last few years, which is called greenwashing. Um, even I can give examples. Today, whole day, I was on looking, scrolling on social media to see what people are doing. Uh, tree plantation, yes, of course, uh, clean up and then not to look for a credibility next year. I mean, even tree plantation, what you said, they mm -hmm. can continue planting. Or even what you just, you said you went to Jamalpur and did a tree plantation. Then next year, probably you release a report, you know, this, this the forest, the forestation that we have done, that looks yeah. like this now. <laughs> uh, those should come with credibility. So the greenwashing, so how do you see it in Bangladesh? How, have you also, con I mean, observed and do you think people are now realizing this matter of greenwashing i think yeah it's uh it's it started the movement has started it's a silent movement i would rather say because people are not talking about greenwashing in bangladeshi companies they're talking about global brands like coca-cola they're blaming them that for, for greenwashing uh the recent thing that they have taken the naked sustainability but they, they have removed the label from Sprite bottles and they're making it transparent and they're doing certain things to save carbon and, and to you know reduce pollution, carbon emission. People are saying they're doing greenwashing, but 
On the contrary to that, I can see greenwashing in everywhere. In fact, let 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 we leave let us leave the organizations and think about persons that who we are. We are utilizing the tissue papers, like we're we're taking out tissue papers like as if they are, you know, they are there for free, they are made of nothing. And we're using it for towel. Uh, you can use one tissue paper to, you know, uh, oh, how, how do you say, it? Uh, you know, to complete your, you know, uh, drying your hands. But we're taking it, I mean, we don't realize how much how much it costs to the to the environment. These tissue papers come from, from, from the trees. We're printing a lot of things and on the papers. We don't realize that how much how much it costs to and to the environment. We only know that okay, these these papers are from the, the company purchases it. So if I if I spoil a few papers, it doesn't matter. It's just a cost of the company. We don't realize how much it costs to the environment. So at, at personal level as well, we are we say that we are aware of the environment, we are aware of the climate change issues. We want to be, you know, good citizens. We are cautious about not polluting the environment. I have quit smoking to, you know, save environment. But on the other hand, sorry, I'm I'm utilizing tissue papers like towels. I'm 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 wasting papers. I'm I'm reading newspapers. I'm I'm throwing out newspapers. I'm throwing garbages on the on the on the canals, on the lakes, on the ponds. I'm, I'm, everyone is doing that. In fact, simple thing: we are spitting on the street. That is harmful to the environment. That, that is harmful to other people. So we're doing all these sort of things. So greenwashing, yeah, it continues. Uh, earlier, we, as you said, I was I used to work for the garment sector a lot. We used to see that they have ATPs, but they are they were not operational. But I think the after the Rana Plaza incident, the garment sector has turned around. Uh, now we have many lead certified factories in the country. The garment owners they have also you know. Uh, when the buyers promise that if you if you comply certain comply certain things we will get you give you higher prices uh, that that you have always been demanding so the garment owners now are more cautious they are more aware of things they are now running etps they are trying to reduce uh, their water conservation um, water consumption they are trying to reduce their energy consumption they are trying to do things but greenwashing i mean knowingly or unknowingly yes it it still prevails uh agree so uh that continues to the next question it's actually a follow-up question part of it you already have covered like i wanted to know uh, if the corporates are now um uh addressing the greenwashing and if you have observed anybody uh even including your uh the company you work for anybody in bangladeshi corporate context that have done something that looks like a proper csr or sustainable project uh, in terms to combat greenwashing or even actually not doing anything related to greenwashing, also a kind of a CSR that a corporate can contribute on this day. So have you um, noticed anything positive that people are recognizing, brands are recognizing? Yeah, we have recently completed one project, one pilot project where we have seen, uh, you know, tremendous opportunity to, to address the climate change issues and, and help people as well. I'll go to that uh, later, but first, greenwashing is something that we are actually at as at the individual level we are not aware of what greenwashing actually means. How people do greenwashing, how companies do greenwashing, as I said in the, in my previous answer. So, <clears throat> until we know what greenwashing is, until we realize whether we are doing it ourselves or not, there will not be much you know debate. There will not be much discussion about this greenwashing thing. Uh, it has it's important that voluntary organizations especially like the one that you have the zero plastic organization movement you may come up with this with this with this idea of uh, you know awareing people that what what greenwashing is and how we can stop it and how we can address it um, at organization level and also at individual level so for for the time being in bangladesh there are a lot of greenwashing as i said for environment day we just make a beautiful post we post it on social media saying that we're doing certain things but on the other hand we are not we are doing many things that we shouldn't do should not do there are things that policy don't allow us because as a bank we have to create we have to preserve a lot of printing you know forms banking forms we have to create a lot of forms and we have to preserve it for four to five years so that when the auditors come back, we can show it to them. It's it's a policy requirement. So there are certain requirements that, 
by which we are you know bound to do certain things like we have to use we have to consume a lot of paper a lot of paper even if there is a digital bank coming up in bangladesh uh, the traditional banks will always be dependent on papers and they'll have to keep that record so whether we want or not we cannot go beyond papers we cannot reduce that amount we cannot reduce the paper consumption uh, so greenwashing prevails greenwashing remains and it will remain uh, for a few more years uh, coming back to uh, an impactful CSR project. Recently, what we did is uh, last year, in fact, uh, our regulators, the Bangladesh Bank, they instructed us to uh, spend some money in agriculture as part of our CSR. Uh, there were certain funds, so they you, they said that you have to utilize this fund in agriculture. And what we found is that uh, in the coastal areas in Bangladesh, we have the largest you know, running sea beach, Cox's Bazaar, uh, around the Bay of Bengal. So in the coastal areas, there are lands um, where uh, it's become more saline. Uh, they, the farmers, they can produce, you know, a certain kind of rice for three months. And for the rest of the nine, eight or nine months, the land is, you know, it's it's not utilized. It's there. It's just barren lands. So there are organizations like our parent organization, BRAC, there is Department of Agriculture Extension. They came up with a solution that th these farmers can utilize this land and cultivate sunflower. And we have asked these farmers to, you know, volunteer to this project. And they were they, they actually couldn't believe that these barren lands can do something good for them. So when they cultivated sunflower and it yielded, they could use the sunflower seeds to make sunflower oil and sell it to the market. They can use the sunflower tree as fuel. And this land is actually producing something. So they were amazed. And that created, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, buzz in the in the country as well. And now we are thinking that how we can scale up this initiative. You know, uh, Black Bank alone cannot do many things. So we are thinking of creating a coalition of banks and other organizations where you can we can accommodate fund and and support the sunflower cultivation in the coastal areas. It will also reduce salinity in the coastal areas and make maybe make make the lands fertile again. So this is one of the new inventions that we have done as part of CSR and. Uh, we hope to, you know, scale it up in future. That's really nice to know. Even I didn't know that sunflower uh, yielding can be this uh, valuable. Uh, so the uh, next question is, uh, we are almost actually about to finish. It's the num uh, eighth question for you. Is um, uh, I know being a Bangladeshi, there are a lot of problems in the environment. Uh, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, according to you, what do you think should be focused right now in the context of Bangladesh in terms of pollution or the environmental problem that Bangladesh should address uh, as a primary country? And uh, I think mostly in Asia or South Asia, we have this tendency to believe that when we see a lot of developments, mm -hmm. construction, infrastructures are getting done, that means it's developing. It, yeah. That is the sign of development. Yes. That is absolutely wrong. It is yeah. not the sign of development. As long as it is balanced, it can be. But how are we balancing it up? Who's going to monitor? That is, that is, a, that is a greenwashing as well. Correct. So uh, to the next question, which is actually my uh, favorite question to you, because the uh, the most important part that you do out of your career is the journalism. Uh, you write about sustainability and the other environmental aspects. Uh, how do you see the journalism also, not only the online media, also the social media, print media, even the news sectors can uh, can be held responsible and contribute to sustainable uh, lifestyle or sustainable development awareness in Bangladesh? Well, uh, it's a very it's a very risky question to answer because uh, I cannot say the right answer here. I, I'm I'm not supposed to say the right answer as well. Uh, well, coming back from Jamalpur, I was I was seeing a statement by one of the editors of one of the national leading national newspapers. Uh, it is about a certain person who have recently been on the news for you know. Uh, grabbing lands and making a lot of money and utilizing, misutilizing his power. Uh, and the editor said that we knew it from before, but we could not, we could not dare to write about this person because we didn't know if the government would support us if this person threatened us. So, uh, so that statement actually says a lot of things. So the media, they, you know, they try to explore, uh, certain issues if there is pollution they're trying to you know make news of uh, out of the out of it 
they're going to different organizations and they're finding, uh, you know, the, the uh, maybe bribery or doing uh, unethical things. The media is aware of that. They're doing news. Uh, they want to do the news because they know that these are the things that they should promote. But the media, I mean, there are certain things that media, uh, even if they know something, they don't do always. They don't expose uh, the large, the bigger players. They go for the small fishes and, and highlight them. Um, so yeah, that is that is the story. I am uh, I don't think I can I can make detailed comment about that question. But yes, the media has a, a big role to play. But uh, at the same time, the government must support the media to you know make sure that it helps the government. It can be the admin for the government, the media actually. So they can they can if if the government backs the media, then the the media can go uh, dig deep into into government organizations, into private organizations, into in, in, even you know neighboring communities, and identify what is going right and what are the things that not going right or maybe going wrong. Uh, so the media can highlight these wrong things and and you know the government can take actions to make things right. So we cannot blame the media. Uh, the media has certain roles. We all know that, but the government must support the media to, you know, do their things uh, in their way. Otherwise, uh, yeah, they will not be able to do things. I actually agree, and uh, saying that, you, you know, not only the journalists but uh, also the influencers, social media influencers. I actually take them as a part of the media or journalists community because people listen to them people follow them that's what the journalists also do right people follow the stories they write and you know read and in context believe them yeah. so i think all the influencers also hold a lot of responsibility in this manner the last question to you which i usually ask to all the guests uh so to your context is mostly regarding the csr and sustainability if there is one message you want to share with the audience today uh, what would be that message before we move to the question and answers? Okay, so the one message, the one thing that I always dream of is that the young people, the young minds, they come up, they they try to learn about CSR, they try to learn about sustainability, they understand what is impacting their life, and then they advocate to their parents, to their friends, to their grandpas, to their you know little brothers that do things do these things and don't do these things so these young people they have access to digital media they have access to a lot of information and they are the future leaders and they are the future shapers of this earth so my one message would be to educate this youth utilize this youth make them understand and feel responsible for for the actions that we do and if they want to bring any change let us allow them to bring changes and allow them to you know teach us what is right for the future, for a greener future, for a you know more sustainable future. So we have to allow this youth, we have to empower the youth with knowledge on sustainability. Thank you so much. That was a very insightful session with you, Shofik Bhai. And uh, I definitely uh, uh, you know, recalled and also uh, catch up with a lot of uh, things, new things that is happening in Bangladesh right now. Even though uh, sitting here in Sri Lanka, I follow the stories and my heart breaks every year when I see the flood news. Um, uh, by the time uh, I get the questions from the audience, I definitely wanted to know how the flood situation now Bangladesh is combating the cyclone Remal has hit the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have gone to out of Dhaka today. How do you see the situation is right now? Before I go to the answer, I would like to request the audience to start sending the questions to uh, Mr. Shafiq uh, based on today's session. I will be running that for next 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. Shafiq, by over to you. So the cyclone situation was actually worst in the in the southern part of the country, but actually we have Sundarbans, the, the one of the largest mangrove forests in, in, in the South Asia. That forest actually saves us all the time. Whether it was Cyclone Isla, the Cyclone Remal, this Sundarbans is a savior for our people. And now we more now we have people now people are also aware of what they should do when there is a, there is a you know now we have access to information so they are the the people they know when the cyclone is coming so they are they also move they actually volunteer to move uh, to a nearby shelter and there are organizations like BRAC I must I must mention about BRAC not just because they are my parent organization uh, where we where I work 
they have actually done tremendous work. They have volunteers, they have created these volunteer organizations, they have engaged a lot of youth who actually volunteer before the cyclone hits. They they mic day and night, they go to home, they go from house to houses and they remove people from, from the danger areas to the nearby shelters. So uh, the, risk, the cyclone remal, it actually destroyed a few houses, killed below 100 people, I think. Uh, and, and, and it could not do much damage because people are now aware of that. Now, the cyclone part is for the, for the southern part of the country. In the eastern region, we had this flood coming from India, the Assam Meghalaya areas, because and Meghalaya is one of the you know, heavy rainfall areas. Uh, the flood water has, you know, that the water has gone away, but people are still suffering. And uh, we are still waiting for the monsoon season. It's not even the monsoon. So the monsoon will have more rain. Uh, the, the rivers in India are already flowing below, above their line, the safety line. So we are expecting more floods uh, in, the, in the coming months. And I think the government is taking preparation of how they should, they would tackle this flood situation. And we're also preparing, you know, mobilizing funds that if there's a flood situation, we can provide funds to for people to survive on food, buy medicines. And the telecom, the telecom organizations, they are they are much, much better prepared now. So and and this, their engineers, they they ensured that the 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 towers, if there is no electricity, they run on the renewable energy, they are accommodating batteries so that uh, for three, four, five days, if the electricity is not there, they can they can people can utilize the mobile network. We have power banks now. The power banks are available to many people. The shelters now have mobile charging facilities. So we are, you know, we have improved a lot. We have become more resilient, I would say. We have become more resilient to this, to these natural calamities. Yeah, I think that's the most part of it. We have to be resilient. We have battled the situations that we have created. Uh, so I will go back to the audience now. You can either send the question on the chat or open your camera and ask the question directly to Mr. Shafi. Semini, over to you. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, actually, there's a question. Um, I'll read it. So it asked, how is sustainability integrated into the national education curriculum in Bangladesh? Sorry, how? Questions from participants. May I read again? I'm, I'm sorry, how, how sustainability? No. How sustainability integrated into the national education curriculum in Bangladesh? Oh, no, no, it's not. Uh, we don't have anything on sustainability in the national curriculum. Uh, there are certain stories that, uh, uh, as a young mind, what, uh, what, uh, what a young, you know, as a young people, or maybe as a kid, uh, how you how you should behave with the with, with your with your seniors, how we should uh, behave with our juniors, how we should not pollute the environment. Maybe you know throwing away things and 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 those are the things. The basic you know etiquette that we see uh, uh, we we learn from our childhood. These are the basic things that we have in the in the curriculum in the national curriculum. Actually, the government is also you know they are experimenting uh, to you know create things that are you know more creative more you know innovative curriculum for for the young generation but i haven't heard of any you know anything that that relates to sustainability which is integrated in the national curriculum it's some of the basic etiquettes that we learn uh, when people study bba bachelor of business administration or maybe environmental science then they learn about certain things but in the national curriculum yeah there is nothing on sustainability in bangladesh unfortunately Okay, uh, then the second question. Let me. Is there any um, international organizations that uh, Bangladesh collaborated uh, and other countries to achieve its sustainability goals? Yes, we have a lot of international NGOs who are working in Bangladesh. Uh, we have the UN organizations as well. Uh, they often collaborate with the government. They often, you know, fund projects and do do you know joint projects with the government to do to attain certain sustainability ag agendas. Uh, as of now, if we if you see the sustainability index, Bangladesh has done uh, good performance in terms of uh, SDG uh, SDG four, which is quality education. Uh, then SDG uh, three, I mean, the reducing maternity, 
uh, deaths related to maternity or the early childhood deaths, Bangladesh has done really well in that. Uh, in terms of securing women from early early marriages or dowry, or you know social injustice, our country has progressed in those SDG parameters. But uh, in the other parameters, like the SDGs 3, 6, 7, 11, 14, 15, um, relevant, related to life above ground, life below water, uh, sustainable cities, uh, responsible consumption, the government hasn't you know, achieved much, uh, hasn't progressed much in that, in those, in those parameters. We can, you can see the SDG index, uh, it's available on the, on the SDG website how much a country have progressed in which areas and how much it is falling back, falling behind. So you can actually track that. So Bangladesh, you will see that Bangladesh hasn't done much uh, in terms of you know environmental or social things. Actually, I have a question, Shafim Bhai. Uh, it's not a part of 10 questions, but what I just figured from your, what you were saying. Um, uh, uh, like you said, uh, there are not much of a movement going on just like zero plastic movement in Bangladesh. Um, how do you see uh, if any uh, movement or any kind of awareness program, if the youth wants to collaborate, how do you see the corporates actually holds up the uh, responsibility or even the government holds up the responsibility to make it happen, one. And the second one is, um, uh, we have a lot of students in this forum today listening to you uh, from Sri Lanka. If one of them wants to be a CSR expert in their life in future after they graduate, what is the one suggestion you want to give them that they can focus on during their undergrad? Okay. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, you know, the corporate the corporate market has become very dynamic. So earlier, we used to see corporates setting targets for five to 10 years. Now they're changing their priorities every one year or two years. So it's very difficult for corporates to you know, focus on one thing. So today they are focusing on uh, maybe reducing paper consumption. After one year, their priority shifts from reducing paper consumption to you know, avoiding plastics. So the paper, that project is stopped. Now they have a new project. So we have become more dynamic. So the, the priorities have shifted. Uh, we are more short-term focused now. So if we want to create a forum where corporate, we expect support from the corporate that we will create a zero plastic forum and then corporates will come forward and join this forum and they will support it. It's very difficult for, for Bangladesh. We had an alliance, uh, I think one or two years back where many of the multinational companies, the big companies, they joined that forum. But we actually haven't seen in the in the last two years. I haven't seen uh, anything uh, that this organization, this forum, has done. Uh, we had a lot of youth volunteer organizations as well. They, you know, they came to the limelight in three four years time. After that, they got some awards, and then they disappeared. Uh, there's no news of that. So. If we want to create a movement, then it has to be sustainable. It has to be. It has to have a model by which, without any support from the maybe maybe from the government or the private sector, the the forum, the movement can sustain itself. So we have to think of that model. If we if we can come up with a solution like that, where we will not uh, we will not pull the corporates, rather the corporates will you know they will be eager to join this movement. If we can come up with uh, any such model, then this these movements will be you know successful uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, and the second question, if you want to be a CSR expert, you have to first understand what CSR is. Like I have, I am very you know cautious when I when I brush my teeth that I don't keep the water running. When I take a shower, when I when I'm doing shampoo to my long hair, I I I, I actually don't keep the water running. So these are certain habits that have grown. If there is no one in the room, if in, even in my office, uh, if I pass, I mean, if I go past uh, a meeting room and I see that no one is there, I go inside the room and switch off the light, switch off the air condition. Uh, during the daylight, I remove the curtain of my side uh, so that I don't have to use light. So these are certain things that, you know, I because I started my career as a CSR professional, I, I had no idea, I had zero clue about CSR. But when I joined the organizations, I, I that organization, I found interest in the, in that subject matter. So you first have to be, you know, interested in doing things that people don't do. 
So you, they will call you mad. This man is mad. He's always switching off lights. He's always switching off multiplugs. People will call you mad, but you have to accept that, okay, you call me mad, I don't mind, but I'm doing my part. So if you are that person who can do his part or her part, then you are, you will be a very, you will be an amazing CSR professional. Trust me. I think on that case, all my uh, zero plastic movement students, the change makers are all in the right track because they are not only making other people aware about the problem, they are also practicing in their own life. So all of you are already in the right track, according to what Shofik Bhai said. Uh, Semini, uh, do we have any more questions? Yes, uh, we have one more question. Um, that is, um, overfishing has a great impact on the uh, environment and ecosystems. So is there a way to make fishing a sustainable industry without wreaking havoc on the environment? That's the question. I think very important for Bangladesh being a river-based country and love fish. <laughs> She's well, asking actually... about overfishing. Yes, overfishing is, is, you know, it has been a problem in the past. Now we are facing a new problem. There is not enough fish in the, in the rivers because we are throwing the chemical waste in the rivers. We are, uh, there, is a, there, is a, there is a dam in the India-Bangladesh border where India controls the Faraka Dam. So they control the water flow in our country. So at, when, when, when we need water, we don't have water. And when we don't want them, we have flooding situation. Uh, then we, there are certain fishes that we used to use in aquarium to, you know, clean the aquarium glasses, the sucker fish. I, I think that's, that's what they call. We have recently found a lot of sucker fish in the river because people didn't know what these fish do. So or how much capable these fish, fishes are. They have thrown this, this fish in the river. And now this fish is, you know, eating up the small fishes and we're, we're looking for fishes now. We have uh, we have land filled our our ponds in the villages in the in the in the local areas. Uh, we are creating uh, artificial lakes. So overfishing was something that we are very aware we are very worried about in the in the even four five years back. Now we are actually looking for fishes. We don't have fishes. Let alone be overfishes. I mean we don't have fishes that we can we can fish properly. So the 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 fishers the fishermen they're actually going into deep sea now. Because they don't find uh, enough fish in the in the in the in the, in the adjacent sea areas, and uh, there is one thing, the government has imposed a law that uh, for a certain period of time, maybe I think for between July to maybe September October, that is the that is the month where they the government is very strict about not fishing the hilsha fishes when when they come to the you know they come from the sea to the Meghna River to lay eggs. So the government is very, you know, strict about that. They have imposed uh, laws. <clears throat> they have sent out polices, river polices, so that the fishermen are not, they don't go for fishing these hilsha fishes and they allow them to lay eggs. So that is one thing the government has done remarkably well. Uh, but overfishing, that is no more a problem for us. We are actually looking for fishes. Thank you so much, Shafiq Bhai. I think we uh, have we are running out of time now. Uh, so uh, over to you, Semini. Before that, uh, I would like to express my heartfelt uh, thanks to you, Shafiq Bhai, for making time on a, such a busy day. Uh, being Environment Day is a very busy day for CSR people, I know. And I'm glad that you actually gave us time on this day on the request of Zero Plastic Movement. Uh, hopefully, we'll connect and catch up uh, through Zero Plastic Movement again. Uh, till then, take care. And over to you, Semini. Can we have a photo? Uh, oh, screenshot? And this is the best environment day I've had so far in my life. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. So, I request all the participants to switch on your camera so then we can take a picture. Okay, so now I see real people. <laughs> I 
and I hope people knows what bhai means because Jacqueline was calling me Shafiq bhai. Bhai means yeah. Bhai. Uh, okay, so bhai actually is Aya in Sri Lanka. You guys call the elder elder brothers Aya. So in Bangladesh, it's very common to use bhai even if it's the person is on your same age or elder or even your colleague. We don't call by name. We call bhai. So, I think yeah, that's most one of word the, you guys have learned. I think most of them know that because even myself know that. <laughs> I know that there's a word called bye. <laughs> now, now we just know the true meaning. So, Ravin is there. Ravin, are you there? Can you take the pictures? Guys, if possible, please switch on the camera so that we can all see the beautiful faces and enthusiast leaders of tomorrow and finish the day with a positive sign. That's great. I think, Samini, we can... Yeah, we are taking the pictures, yeah. Okay, Simini. Simini, stop. Simini, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. So... Let me hand over to Madushi to wrap up the session. Madushi. Yes, Madushi. Yeah. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for your active participation and engagement. Uh, special thank you goes out uh, to our team research person, Mr. Shahi, uh, for your invaluable insights and expertise. Your contribution has shed light on the critical issue facing the Bangladesh and have inspired us to take meaningful action towards sustainability. I also want to express my appreciation to our dedicated moderator and Mr. Geoplastic Moment. Elizabeth, guiding, uh, guiding our discussion and enthusiasm that everyone had the opportunity to contribute their thoughts and ideas. Uh, the organizing committee behind the scenes, thank you for your hard work and commitment to making this session success. Thank you once again for your participation and dedication. Thank you. Good night. Okay, thank you, Madhushi. Thank you, Ms. Shafiq, and thank you, Jackie. Thank um, you. <laughs> okay, Good bye. Night. Good night.